Mm. These are really good apples. Holy crap. Getting ready to go pick some apples right now. And uh, the thing is, for our property, we have six apple trees alive right now that are like of mature size. But um, we planted about 40, uh, at least. And those are the surviving ones right now. And they don't have pollinating pears uh, or matches, so they don't produce fruit. Um, but the good thing is, there's a neighbor up the road that doesn't pick their apples, so we're gonna go grab some apples from their place right now. And that's a good thing um, to keep in mind, you know, if you don't have apple trees of your own, find a place around you. Um, it's just a neighbor of mine. I know of a couple orchards that I've picked from in the past that, um, that don't actually use their apples. So you, if you poke around and, or go knocking on people's doors, they're usually happy that you're picking up what they say is a mess. So go get yourself some free apples the way I'm doing right now. And they're usually pretty stoked that you're picking them up. So give it a shot. Just got out into my neighbor's, uh, my neighbor's orchard and um, apples are pretty small this year. Uh, we did have a drought this summer and they're kind of uh, shriveled up and stuff. And you know, of course you've got um, some holes from worms and things like that but they're actually still pretty good for making cider or making applesauce or anything like that. Some of them are still good for eating and making pies and all that stuff. But um, it wasn't quite the year that we were hoping for and our ladder isn't reaching them all, so I'm gonna shake this puppy and get some of them to fall. Yeah! That's not quite the pickings we were hoping for. We're, we're gonna try and get enough to press, but don't really don't quite know yet, so we'll round them up and find out. Might have like a one, two little bites in it, but that's the thing about apples is a lot of people expect them to look just picture perfect like they they are in the grocery store, but if you accept a couple little blemishes, that's really as good as fruit gets right there. I mean, fresh picked off the tree doesn't get any better than that. We've picked up quite a few apples and uh, we're just starting to fill up our containers. And some of them are actually good size for sure. And uh, later we'll go through and sort them. And like something like that, I mean, you can only really make applesauce or apple cider out of that. But um, as you can tell, it's good fun for everybody. Even though that's got a spot where it's been eat eaten on by bugs, it doesn't really matter to me. <clears throat> some people might say, hey, I'm not picking that one. That's fine. The bugs are just gonna eat it. But like I say, you know, you can find things on the ground that are still good. Your mind might have told you otherwise, but. Mm. Pretty good. A little sour, but good. That one had a rotten center. <laughs> That's okay. That's mm. okay. Sometimes you gotta get yourself all the way up in the tree to get a good shaking on it. And this is one of those times. Here's uh, an apple tree of our neighbors. Um, this is the first time that we've picked here. They're generous enough to allow us to pick. And they actually use the apples here. They're in a nice like front yard situation. Um, and these are just beautiful. They're a really good size. And these guys do have um, gardens. They do use them, but like they said, there's only you can only use so many. So we're just gonna we're starting by picking up the ones that are on the ground to help take care of the mess, and then we're gonna move into the ones that are on the tree. But it looks like we will be pressing after all. Just got back with a whole load of apples. I sized them up real quick and just to get an idea for pressing sake. Um, I think we have at least seven bushel right now. And I'm not sure what the going rate for apples by the bushel is, but I'm sure you'd be paying a whole lot. And obviously, they're not all pristine apples. We're getting them for free. And another thing to keep in mind, you know, it was really cool to connect with my neighbor um, that we just got the second load of apples from. He was really happy that he said, hey, this will be the first year ever that 90% of these apples go to use. And hopefully, if we have enough, we're going to make a little bit of apple syrup. We're gonna boil down the apple cider and make the sweetest nectar of all time. Uh, but we'll see about that. I mean, we may or may not have enough, 
But we're gonna drink as much as we can fresh. And um, I know my buddy who has the press wants to ferment some and everybody who has helped, we're gonna give a little bit of cider too. When you press apples, you can expect about like three gallons per bushel, but you wanna use you know fresh apples off the tree is what they uh, suggest. But in that way of just using up those apples that are still good that are on the ground that probably fell in the last week, like we had a good windstorm. So like we're cleaning up the ground and hopefully we can go back next year and all that stuff and it's just like a good thing to keep going. But you just, you know, it's just a nice gesture to kind of clean up the yard a little bit by picking up some of the apples that might not be, you know, picture perfect, but yeah, that was on the ground, big deal. You squeeze it and if it's wrinkly or it's like squishy, then don't take it, you know, but we got so many apples that were on the ground that would have went to waste and it's all about, you know, it's like talk about food waste, talk about, you know, all these apples would have went to waste. We're saving these ones for making pie and maybe storing some in the root cellar. And a good storage apple will still have the stem on it and will be unbruised. Slightly smaller, like the really big ones, like this one might not store forever, but we can, and it's missing the stem. But we can make some apple pie uh, filling or applesauce or do something with them uh, between now and then. And then we have pears. And now that we have our apples and pears and whatnot gathered up, it's time to get pressing. I'll show you what that's all about here. First we're gonna throw out the bad apples, and then we rinse off the ones that we're gonna press before we throw them into the washing machine. And after pulling them out of the washing machine, we give them an extra rinse. And we like to change the water in that washing machine pretty frequent and just try and get them as clean as we can. Then we cut them up for the grinder and make it a little easier to hand crank them through there. And this just kind of um, breaks the apples down so they're easier to press. And then that mesh bag holds in all the pulp and the plate kind of bears the pressure down evenly as the auger comes down to get the juice squeezing. And as you can see, it works pretty well. It's really simple technology, but it's like a real good reason to get people together and celebrate the seasons changing. And here you see the leftovers. And this stuff left behind is all the pulp. And like you can press twice, per se. Like some people will press, press it once like we're doing and then they'll, uh, you can agitate the, uh, the pulp bag or whatever and like mix it up again, press twice. These were all pressed once. So you really could <clears throat> take this and make maybe apple butter or applesauce or something like that out of it, but <clears throat> there's just so much of it. We're gonna compost it and it'll go towards um, soil for gardens of the future and apple trees to come out here. We started pressing apples somewhere just before noon we had a nice big lunch and just kind of kept pressing all afternoon into the evening. It was really nice. Everybody just kind of found their spot and everybody was busy and we all kind of took turns and it was a real nice occasion. So the key to getting a good blend of uh, cider is to just use a lot of different kinds of apples. Depending on how you like it, you know, you might use more green. You know, you just basically use whatever you have. A lot of people ask questions on, you know, like what percentage or like what different kinds. Just use what you got. And if you use all one kind of apple though, it'll come out more kind of like the apple juice is what we've found from experience and from, you know, reading up on it. But you don't get froth like this from just one kind of apple. You gotta have multiple varieties to get froth like that. You can't just get that anywhere. It's the uh, boiling of the cider into apple syrup. And this stuff's just starting to get warm, but we made our own little rocket stoves, simple little cooking rocket stoves, and we got two of them going. This will hold about 14 gallons full, um, but you're like dangerously close to spilling at that point. Basically the ratio is like 7 to 10 gallons of cider makes one gallon of syrup, where if you're boiling down uh, maple sap, it's like anywhere from 30 to 1 to 60 to 1. So you might have to boil 30 or 60 gallons of maple sap to get syrup. It's a wonder to me why there isn't apple syrup out there. 
no one's ever heard of it, but we're making some, and it's just a good way to concentrate the apples. Beautiful pears. Blush. We're gonna see if we can get some juice out of them. Never put, put any pears through this uh, press before, but uh, it's a thing, so I don't know. I'm trying it out. Yeah, we haven't even laid the press down on it. So I'd say it's crushing them pretty good. That looks just like it did when the apples were coming through. Well, it's already flowing, so there might be some juice in these yet. <laughs> so it's the end of the day here. Um, and we've pressed, uh, I think we estimated around about 30 gallons of cider altogether. And the pears did really well. Uh, they actually yielded more juice than the apples did. And they shredded really easily in the uh, crusher. And it went really well. Uh, everybody who came out was really stoked. And it was kind of a last ne second notice type thing. Uh, last night I knew we were ready and the weather was gonna be good. And we're late in October here, and um, like yesterday it was a high of like 48, and it was rainy and crappy all day. And then it got sunny, and it was just beautiful today. I don't know how warm it got, but it was t-shirt weather. We basically sent everyone home with some apple cider who helped, and uh, my buddy Harry, who brought out the press, got to take home a good uh, batch, because without the press, he can't make it happen. So. You know, it was just one of those things where uh, we didn't buy the apples, it was all just a shared, uh, you know, we went out and picked apples that were free and just kind of made something happen and it was a bunch of fun and totally worth doing, so I think everyone who was involved is going to want to do it next year as long as uh, nature cooperates and provides some more apples, we'll be back on them. But uh, yeah, for now, we got some more apple uh, cider to boil down into syrup. This is a seven gallon wide mouth carboy and uh, we've used these in the past for fermenting and stuff like that. They're real handy, but uh, it gets heavy. It's a seven gallon. In this pot here, I think it's four gallons. It might be five, but I'm gonna try and pour enough. I'm blending the pear and the apple now. If me and my dad just tried to press the cider alone, we wouldn't have ended up with this much, you know, just to pick it and do the whole thing. It would have taken us way more time. So it's just a win-win for everybody. And plus, we don't even have a press, so talk about game over if you don't just collaborate. So you can go out there, start poking around, find places that have apples that aren't picking them all uh, or aren't picking them at all, and, you know, just uh, see what you can drum up and poke around, see if somebody has a press. Otherwise, you can make applesauce, apple pie filling, apple butter, you name it. So, and desserts or whatever, but uh, we like to make apple syrup around here because it's easy and it's delicious. I think 90% of the pears that made this juice fell off the tree and I had to round them up. A lot of them had brown spots on them and stuff. But this stuff is gold, and it was all just gonna go to waste. You now, since somebody was generous enough to let us pick their trees, we got some nectar out of it. Yeah. I know what some of you might be thinking. Wait a minute. That was raw juice that they were drinking? I saw chunks of rotten stuff in there. And guess what, you know, it's all good. Here's the thing, you can pasteurize it if you want to. If, you know, if, if that's a concern for you, then you just <clears throat> heat it up. And then hot cider's great too. And all the cider you get at the store is heated up. And you know, they're probably got a pretty good quality control. But when it comes down to it, you know, a little dirt don't hurt. You know, if you're concerned, you can always pasteurize it, but I just love it fresh and raw, because then, it's like 
alive and like the aminos and everything and like you know call it what you will it's still safe per se like um to to have a little bit of bugs a little bit of you know whatnot in there there's bugs in flour there's bugs in everything but um you know as long as you heat it up it's considered safe could get sick from eating it raw maybe but no nah, i'm not concerned about it but you know to each their own so we finished a batch of uh, apple syrup on the wood stove inside we finished up last night and some of it um kind of got hotter or dried up faster than the rest or maybe it was on the walls and kind of got a little bit caramelized it's real tasty still it's got kind of a uh, molasses look or feel to it because it's so thick but it's got a real nice color as you can see well it's hard to put into words the feelings that kind of take over when the cider starts to flow it was just a magical day like the weather was amazing there were kids here like two families had kids with them and just such a blessing to get days like this and to share them with friends and, and family and stuff like that because um, to think I went to pick apples a week ago, or a little over a week ago. We were supposed to press last weekend, and the orchard I went to, there were no apples on the tree, there were no apples under the trees. Um, so I was just like, you know, maybe, you know, hopefully my neighbor has enough. Went to my neighbor's orchard, and only a few trees had apples on them still, and they weren't doing too great, and they were really small, like you saw, and I was wondering if we are gonna even get to press at all. So after all, we pressed and it went really well. Maybe uh, you can get one going in your area if you just uh, start to poke around. This all just kind of came about from a, a strong desire to drink apple cider, basically. A farmer brought in a press to our school and uh, I was in kindergarten. And just getting that fresh apple cider, like he ground, them, ground the apples up and pressed them right in front of us and we all got to have a little, little paper cup and. I think I must have gotten unrefilled or something, but <clears throat> but uh, that made a strong impact on me. And it's like a, a memory that stuck with me, you know, like a the taste and, you know, just hardwired into my brain. That might have been kind of the origin of at least why I wanted to do all this. But once we started doing it a few years ago, it's been a hit ever since.